Throughout the years of competitive Pokemon, players have discovered small ways to optimize their teams and ensure that they can execute their plans as safely as possible. These optimizations can actually ensure a huge variety of things, from taking less damage from an attack to outright making the attack unusable against a particular Pokemon. Some of these you might be familiar with, like having no attack IVs in a Pokemon to make sure foul play does less damage, but there are some more obscure optimizations that have been discovered that may surprise you. So today, let's discuss those strange techs in competitive Pokemon. If you if you enjoyed this video at any point in time, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more competitive Pokemon content. As a matter of fact, you should really just subscribe right now because I have a whole playlist full of videos just like this that I know you'll enjoy. And if you think you're subscribed, can you do me a favor and double check because only like half of my viewers actually are. Also, this video is sponsored by Manscaped. Did you know that every hour, another person is diagnosed with testicular cancer? Actually, for men between the ages of 15 and 35, testicular cancer is the most common type of cancer. As April is National Testicular Cancer Awareness Month, Manscaped gave me the opportunity to speak on the importance of men's health and hygiene. As someone with family members and friends who have had or are currently undergoing treatment for cancer, I can't stress enough just how important hygiene and preventative screening is. With health and hygiene in mind, Manscaped and the Testicular Cancer Society have partnered to help you take care of that region below your waist. Manscaped sent me the Lawnmower 5.0. This cordless trimmer not only includes interchangeable heads and an LED light, but it's even waterproof. With a constant RPM motor, you don't need to worry about a loss in performance as the battery runs out, which should be a rare occurrence anyways, as you can get up to 60 minutes of usage off a single charge. Since I travel a lot for events, I actually really appreciate the travel lock on this thing, preventing it from going off in my bag while I'm moving around. Manscaped, while providing the tools for easy and efficient self-grooming, is partnering with the Testicular Cancer Society to spread awareness for men's health and early cancer detection. As a matter of fact, Manscaped will be donating $50,000 to the Testicular Cancer Society to provide support for fighters, survivors, and families affected by testicular cancer. Visit manscaped.com slash TCS to learn how to check yourself for early signs of cancer or share their educational check yourself video to help save lives and balls. As always, you can use my promo code MOXIE for 20% off plus free shipping at manscaped.com. That's promo code MOXIE for 20% off plus free shipping at manscaped.com. Take your health and hygiene into your own hands. And thank you Manscaped for sponsoring this video. With that, let's get into it. We'll start off with some of the more obvious ones for experienced players, but as we get deeper into the video, I'll talk about some real fringe stuff you definitely weren't aware of unless you've played as long as I have. But let's begin with that whole no attack IVs thing. You see, IVs determine the potential a Pokemon has when they're caught or bred. A Pokemon has an IV for every stat. They range from 0, resulting in 0 extra points in that stat at level 100, to 31, which grants 31 extra points at level 100. As you can imagine, an extra 31 points in any stat can really swing a game in the player's favor. However, these extra points can sometimes be a hindrance to a specific Pokemon in certain matchups, especially after the introduction of the move Foul Play, a 95 base power physical dark move which uses the target's attack stat against them instead of using the user's. While there's not really a reason to run 0 attack IVs on a physical attacker, dedicated special attackers have absolutely no reason to ever have an attack stat higher than zero. By running zero attack IVs, special attackers are able to ensure that foul play users have a tougher time scoring KOs against their Pokemon. But this is especially important for the large amount of psychic and ghost type special attackers who require zero attack IV to not get one shot by foul play since the move is super effective against them. And an additional benefit of zero attack IVs on special attackers is that on the occasion that they're confused by a move like Hurricane, they'll take reduced damage from hitting themselves in confusion. Another case for lower IVs is the existence of Trick Room abusers. The move Trick Room inverts the turn order for 5 turns, causing slower Pokemon to move first. This enables the likes of Calyrex Ice Rider or Stack Attacka to not only use their massive attack in bulk, but play a super fast Pokemon for a limited time. Of course, with Trick Room Sweepers, you want to make sure that you're as slow as possible, so these Pokemon will opt into running zero speed IVs to make sure that they're as threatening as possible in Trick Room, and this can have huge consequences for matchups. Take for example, Amoongus vs. Is Torkoal. In Trick Room, Torkoal should always beat Amoongus with Eruption, but if that Torkoal for some reason is running 31 speed IVs and Amoongus has 0 speed IVs, Amoongus can now sleep it, preventing a sweep from ever starting. These are the most common cases for choosing to run lower IVs, but there are even more niche reasons for a Pokemon to want to lower one of their stats. The Life Orb item will boost the power of a Pokemon's moves by 30%, at the cost of damaging the user for 1 16th of their total health after each successful attack. Because Pokemon rounds down numbers, the math actually works out that Life Orb users can aim for an HP stat ending in 9 to minimize the damage they would take from Life Orb. This can be achieved by increasing the HP investment to reach that number, 
but in the case of Marcus Statter's regional championship winning Great Tusk in 2023, it was actually just smarter to run 28 HP IVs instead. The lowering of HP IVs allowed for Great Tusk's HP to end in 9 without wasting precious EVs on anything other than attack or speed. Because the reduction in health was so minimal, it didn't really affect the defensive calcs of Great Tusk, so this changed a lot for Great Tusk to take less life orb damage without messing with its defenses that much. Technically, this is also achievable for other fast life orb users like Bramblegast, who, like Great Tusk, is more of a take KOs now, worry about eating hits later sort of Pokemon. With an ability which boosts the user's highest stat after each KO, obviously the Ultra Beast will have some cool things they can do with IV manipulation. Stack Attacker would on occasion choose to run 17 defense IVs with a lonely nature. This is because it would result in Stack Attacker's defense stat to be lower to the point of being equal with its attack stat. Its ability Beast Boost would boost the highest stat, giving priority to attack over defense, meaning this was the only way to get Stack Attacker to boost its attack with each KO it took. This strategy can make it a deadly trick room sweeper by spamming rock slide over and over again. Similarly, the only way to get Kartana to speed boost was to run a Timid Nature with 16 attack IVs. This Kartana would trade off a large amount of initial damage output for the ability to click Swords Dance, recovering that damage, and then get a speed boost with every KO that it took, letting it snowball its speed stat to the point where it would outspeed even Regieleki. This particular set was far more common in singles than doubles though. IV manipulation is one thing. But there have been many other strange techs that you may not know about. Let's get to the elephant in the room. Why were players running level 49 Primal Groudon? You see, Primal Pokemon were a little overtuned. It was inevitable that they'd dominate the competitive scene with their introduction in the restricted format of 2016, effectively being a mega evolution for the already dominant Groudon and Kyogre. Not only were their stats ridiculously high, but their abilities were also upgraded. Groudon's Drought became Desolate Land, and Kyogre's Drizzle became Primordial Sea. Desolate Land, like Sun, boosted the power of fire moves by 50%, but instead of weakening water moves, it would cause the water moves to simply fizzle out and be unusable as long as the weather was up, which is great for it, as a water attack would decimate Groudon with its fire and ground typing. Similarly, Primordial Sea would power up water moves and cause fire moves to become unusable. The final major change with these abilities was the fact that these weather conditions would remain active as long as their respective user was on the field. If on lead, Kyogre and Groudon were both sent out onto the field, the slower of the two would gain weather dominance since their ability went off second. This would mean that the one without their weather active would have to switch out and switch back in to have their weather go onto the field. This is especially good for Groudon as not needing to switch out on lead and force another Pokemon to eat a water spot or origin pulse could be life-saving. Many Groudon began to run minimum speed to ensure that they got their weather up second. The Kyogre players would on occasion be minimum speed as well to either have weather dominance on lead or abuse Trick Room. But as Groudon and Kyogre have the same speed stat, there was only one more way to lower the speed. Back before Pokemon Sun and Moon, levels were not automatically set to 50 unless the Pokemon was above level 50. So Groudon players began to run level 49 to make absolute certain that they'd get their weather up on lead against Kyogre. This slight loss in stats was well worth the security of the weather war and having dominance in it. This only got more and more ridiculous as on occasion level 49 Kyogres popped up, leading to even level 48 Groudons to sometimes pop up on ladder. In retrospect, this was kind of ridiculous. Speaking of ridiculous, there are a number of Pokemon which can run level 1 to achieve the fear strat of going down to Focus Sash, clicking Endeavor to have the opponent's HP match your own, and then clicking a priority move to KO them. Smeargle is technically the best at this. This is because Smeargle has access to just about every move in the game, including extreme speed. While Smeargle wouldn't always run this strategy in VGC, it's been an option that some people have opted for in the past. While not as silly as running a level 1 Pokemon, there is actually a large number of players who will opt to run a Pokemon with the minimum number of PP in their status moves. You see, a PP up can be applied to a Pokemon's moves three times, increasing the number of uses per match that move has slightly with each application. For signature moves like Wicked Blow or Glacial Lance, having it maxed out can be essential for winning a battle. But there are some players who think that this isn't the case for moves like Protect, Detect, Swords Dance, and many other status moves. This is entirely due to the presence of the move Encore. Encore is a move which will force the target to repeat the last move they used over and over again for three turns. If the Pokemon has the ability Prankster to give that move priority, or is naturally faster than the target, they can Encore lock a Pokemon, making it stuck clicking Protect or Sword Stance until they decide it's time to KO the Pokemon or it just switches out. Pokemon like Screamtail and Whimsicott are notorious for their ability to Encore lock others into status moves, but a cheeky way to get out of Encore early is to purposely avoid maxing out the PP of your status moves. This is because once a move runs out of PP, the Encore will just immediately end. So rather than having your Urshifu detect for 8 turns in a row, you can get out in just 5 or less depending on when you were Encored. Whimsicott might be 
be notorious for its strength in VGC, but its power is nothing compared to the Gen 5 forces of nature, all of which were locked into being exclusively male, something which some smart players decided to exploit back at the 2011 World Championships. So, there's this ability in the games known as Rivalry. If the user is the same gender as their target, their attacks have a bonus 25% boost in damage against them, while dealing only 75% of the total damage to the opposite gender. There's a number of Rivalry Pokemon in the game, but Haxorus is by far the strongest of them due to its massive 147 base attack stat. This combined with the Rivalry boost for hitting Pokemon of the same gender, allowed for Haxorus to be a major threat to the double genie teams common within the metagame of 2011, while also having a boost against any other Pokemon which happened to be male. This strategy was so so successful that Haxorus managed to finish in three of the top eight slots at the 2011 World Championships, including second place at the hands of Matteo Gini. Ironically, the invention of this tech for Haxorus means that it's technically optimal for all the other Pokemon on your team to be female if they're able to be. Our final tech, and quite possibly my favorite in the history of EGC, is the Totem Araquanid tech of the 2018 season. You see, back in Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, as a reward for collecting stickers throughout the game, you could trade those stickers for totem-sized variants of existing Pokémon. These totem Pokémon were mostly an aesthetic change, but to match their size, they also had a massive increase in weight. Normally, being heavier is a bad thing, as moves like Grass Knot or Low Kick would deal more damage to the Pokemon the heavier they are. But since Araquanid was a water bug type with some massive special defense, it didn't really care about having to eat these moves at full power. What mattered most was avoiding getting Sky Dropped. Sky Drop is a now deleted move, which would have the user carry their target up into the air for a turn, immobilizing them, and then dropping them down on the following turn. As a powerful wall breaker with a flying weakness, it was imperative to optimal Araquanid teams to avoid this. Sky Drop actually had a weight limit of 200 kilograms, meaning anything heavier than that would have the move fail if it were used on them. While regular Araquanid is just 82 kilograms, the Totem variant was a whopping 217.5 kilograms, making it completely immune to the move. This is why, when you look back at the Araquanid from this era, most players were running the heavier variant. He thick. But those were some strange techs and optimizations throughout the years of Pokemon that you might have not known about. Did I miss any? And if I did, let me know in the comments section below. While you're down there, if there's a topic you want me to cover next or have an idea for a video, just let me know it. If you enjoyed, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. It'd mean the world to me. And if you want to support my channel, you can check out my Patreon page or become a channel member by clicking the join button below the video. This gets you sneak peeks at future videos and even some bonus content. You'll also see your name at the end of my videos like all of these lovely people. A special thanks to my most boosted supporters, Avatar67, Jordan Harridge, Melody Lumina, and Pika Power for their generous pledges. Another way to support me is to check out all the videos in the playlist on screen right now. I know you'll find something in there that you'll enjoy. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.